This is probably the moment when I should admit I only went to three lectures in all the subjects I was enrolled in at the University of Queensland. Um, <laughs> however, my association had begun long before that. At the age of 12, I wrote to the professor of physics asking if he could give me a definition um, that would allow me to differentiate between living and non-living tissue. He wrote me back a very long letter saying he had considered the matter and decided to give it to Professor Presley, the Professor of Philosophy, who wrote me back a 16-page letter, which did not answer the question. It did give me, however, um, a four-page bibliography, which I discovered no books were available in the city library and certainly not the school library, and I would have to wait till I got to university, where he very strongly asked that I would study philosophy. No matter how bad things got when I was a teenager, as a homeless 15-year-old, I knew that all I needed was a scholarship to the University of Queensland, and life would be good, where I would meet people that I could talk to, where I could read those books, and where my intellect could range wherever it wanted to. No, I didn't go to the subjects I was enrolled in. There was no point. I knew everything I would learn in an undergraduate career, an undergraduate course. Instead, because of the way the university was run, I was able to go to all of Dr. Paul Gerber's law lectures. I was able to attend the Department of Physics, Veterinary Science, and every philosophy lecture, no matter what the subject was, and many, many more. I didn't have the normal two or three lectures a day. I had at least 10 hours a day in various lectures, but even more importantly, discussions with academics who did not differentiate between colleagues and students. The extraordinary interdisciplinary conversations which would go on for hour after hour after hour, meandering at times and at other times, actually discovering vital interdisciplinary points. It was an extraordinary education. At that time, too, as well as scholarships, there was a policy that promising students would be given jobs. In fact, I suspect a lot of the jobs were created, so we were able to eat. Scholarships were good, but they didn't quite pay for everything. The 10 hours or 20 hours a week I spent at the Anthropology Museum of Queensland recording Indigenous oral histories from around Australia gave me my past and showed me my future. It was a profound and extraordinary education. At the University of Queensland, I learned courage. I learned intellectual courage, and I also learned intellectual generosity. And I profoundly hope that as the decades and the centuries go by for the University of Queensland, that that courage and that extraordinary generosity never vanishes. Thank you.